Masking in Lightroom is huge, and with the AI mask improvements over the past year, and now the introduction of RGB curves within the mask panel, the amount we can do within a mask is incredible. Today, I wanna to show you how to eliminate the downsides of masking and how to not overdo masks. Now, for those of you that use my Elegance 4 Speed Masks Pack, I just did a massive update. Whether you use those or not, I'm gonna show you along this video how to quickly make your own mask system. Masks in Lightroom started out as just brushes and these little pins and very limited, and we had these brush presets, which actually still exist. With a brush preset or a local adjustment preset, you can take whatever mask, whether old or new Lightroom, and change all the settings in a click. But I'm going to be honest, I don't do that very much anymore because I almost always just do a speed mask. And it's what Lightroom masks should be and how they should be taught. So even if you don't use my speed masks and you're making your own system, that's fine because I'm gonna show you the template of how I discovered to make masking in Lightroom super powerful and super efficient. Honestly, masking in Lightroom now is a mile ahead of the layers in Capture One as I talked about in my 2023 Capture One versus Lightroom review. And today I'm gonna to show you how to make Lightroom masks like 10 times faster just using speed masks because it changes everything about how you mask. Here's a photo here that's cool, but it was obviously taken in harsh lighting conditions up in the grudas of Hidalgo. I've processed this already. I used a Filmist Ektar preset on this. I tweaked it a little bit manually. I have Elegance 4.5 installed. So let's say I wanna fix this. I can just go over here and say, hey, let's run the Harsh Light Duo and click it, and it's gonna apply these masks. Now, these aren't even AI masks. If I come in here to the mask panel, you can see that two masks have been added, a highlight balance mask and a shadow mask. Now, these are actually masks based on luminance values that are then taking this image that was super harsh and way over contrasty from the sun and balancing that. Now, how Lightroom generally has you make masks is you go over here and you click the kind of mask you want, whether it's an AI, like a subject mask or a luminance range mask, like we just made here. And then you apply all the parameters of the mask you want, or you run the AI mask, and then you have to manually select all the sliders. The problem is that it's actually incredibly inefficient to build up these masks individually and then have to apply all the settings and define all the parameters and get them dialed in for what you want for an individual image. Masks also have a huge problem. I have a fairly powerful system and masks consistently bring everything to its knees. The implementation of masks in Lightroom is incredibly inefficient in terms of resource usage. And that's the biggest beef I have against them. So there's all these things we can do with masks, but we need to make that efficient. And that's where speed masking enters to make everything better. Now in this first example, I showed a pretty simple Luma mask, but you still would have spent five minutes dialing that in if you hadn't done what? Saved the speed mask. In Lightroom, you can build up as many masks as you want, including AI masks, and then you can go over here to presets and you can create a preset that only saves those masks. So while this mask was pretty simple, there's other mask combinations in Elegance that do these combos of face and subject and body and background and light and dynamic range and tone. Here's a good looking portrait here, again, edited with Filmist. I wanna make this a look a little more glamorous. Now I could manually build up my masks or I could go to Elegance and just click the AI Glamour Shot. So we've added 11 masks to this photo in a single click. And look what they're doing. Here's with the masks off and here is with the masks on. The result is phenomenal. It makes the portrait beautiful without overdoing it. But you might be looking at my edit here and saying, Gavin, it is over edited. And if you want to go a little subtler or a little more with the edit, that's also why it's essential that you use or build your own speed masks. Two things happen when you speed mask. The first is you get all the layers built up automatically and they're all named. And that causes a third thing to happen, which I'm going to show you in a minute. The second thing that's happened is when you apply a speed mask, a speed mask is a develop preset. When I select a mask layer in Lightroom, I have a slider and I can turn that layer up or down respectively to change the effect. But what's even better is that if I've applied this as a develop preset, it now gives me the option to decrease or increase the entire effect. Yes, all 11 mask layers 
at the same time. I could turn this entire thing, let's say, down to 50%. Or if I want to go for this really glamorous kind of smooth look, I could turn everything down. Now it's, I would say, definitely too much, but it's wild. Or I could go somewhere in between if I just want this really refined kind of magazine look. The advantage of using a pack of speed masks like this is you come in and you have everything in place. So we have general, we have nature, high dynamic range tools, portraits, tone manipulations. Now we have the ability to use curves and do even more in masks. I've refined essentially every portrait effect and a vast majority of the other ones so that they play better together. So you can click one and then click another. Let me show you what I mean. That's the third thing that I mentioned. So when you build masks by default in Lightroom, it doesn't have everything nice and organized exactly the way you want it. But because I put these in a speed mask, I can not only control the overall effect up here, I now have all these layers made and all the AI tools ran. Let's say I'm not loving this and I still want another portrait combination, but I want something like skin smoothing. If I go and click AI only skin smooth, it's gonna change this entire effect, but you notice it didn't add layers and I didn't have to wait for it to redo the AI. It saw that those layers already existed that were defined in the speed mask develop preset and it simply changed the settings of all those preset to this smooth skin only that does a lot less of an intense effect. So now I have this more subtle, just a skin smoothing effect that I can control up or down and it still leaves all my same layers. If you're building mask presets, this is something you want to do. And it's something that I worked a lot in in this new version of Elegance to make everything work and play together smoother. There's some presets that are more simple, like the first one I showed you, that just add a couple of layers. And then there's other presets that add six, seven, eight, nine, ten layers. So you have eyes and eyebrows and skin and face, and it's balancing. These aren't blank layers, and they aren't layers that have all the same settings. I've built an effect on every one of these layers, and you could click any one of them and manually adjust it, manually adjust it with the new curves that are now available. A lot of the presets and elegance, in fact, have been updated with some curve refinements to make their tone control even better. You could also go and select a local adjustment preset from elegance or from your own collections and apply it to that layer. You don't have to do any of that. And frankly, I think you rarely will. Speed masking is not known that well. I don't know why it's not being taught as an integral part of editing with masks in Lightroom. So I can go here and I can take this really flat image of Thor as well. I'm gonna go straight to my natural HDR presets and get an overall develop preset that's really good. But the sky still needs more. I'm gonna go to Elegance and do the Nature AI Dynamic Duo Remix. And with just another click, even though it's only two layers, everything is put in place and those layers are right there. In fact, I can change this around. Let's switch it to Dynamic Duo Original and it's gonna make it look slightly different it just changed the settings that were defined to those layers. I think I like the remix a little more here. And of course I can turn it up or down with the amount slider because this was built into a preset. So I can go from this to this in about three clicks using develop presets. Let's look at another portrait. Here's my raw file. Here's my file process with presets and things like that, but it's still not that great because my sky is so washed out and I want to smooth it up a little bit. I'm just gonna use the AI basic beauty mix, which is just two or three layers. And so now I've applied the masks and it looks quite a bit better, but my sky is still a mess. So I'm gonna go down here to my sky AI presets and we're gonna do the sky blue classic, which gives a natural blue sky that fades out exactly the way I want to. And in this case, I'm going to go up to the settings and I'm actually going to turn it up a little more and make that sky even a little bit more intense. And I could even come in over here and manually control the exposure and things like that to make it a little richer. What have we done in 15 seconds? We've gone from this to this. And then when I like it, I simply come back and I copy the mask settings and the develop settings to all the similar images in it. If you use my elegance presets, you wanna just delete the old develop presets. You can leave the local adjustment presets alone because those didn't change, but delete all the elegant speed mask presets and just install the new version. You're gonna see a ton of these refinements and updates all marked as 4.5. And you're gonna see a lot of new presets as well. Let's take this wedding image where it's an environmental portrait. It's already been edited. It's kind of hazy and misty and nice, but I. I can go to the nature and people dream mix and just click that combination 
And it's going to apply all of these different layers to control the atmosphere of this kind of a scene. Do I want more? Probably not. That's a bit too much. I think maybe less, like about 60% to dial this back and make it feel natural. Here is my before and here is my after. Sometimes people will say, oh, using presets is for amateurs because we should be doing everything manually and adjusting the sliders. Yes, you should know how to use your sliders in Lightroom. The way I just built like eight layers and then I can unilaterally adjust the intensity of all of those eight layers combined, you can't even do that if you built manual masks. And now I can say, no, turn it to 50, turn it to 150, leave it normal. These don't eliminate the need to do your basic develop settings. And generally I recommend that you develop your photos first and then you take the ones you want to refine and do some masking on. This high dynamic range scene here that I've showed you before in a tester image for natural HDR presets, but I know I can make it better with masks. With just a single click in the HDR beauty mix speed mask, I just applied all of these and here is what we started with and here's what we added. And the beauty is that now I can say, okay, turn it up, turn it down. You decide it's glorious. And now with the ability to use curves. So by the way, if you look at the individual masks, you can see I've applied settings to each of these. The highlight soft, for example, if you go down here, you see that we're dropping the highlight curve a little bit here to get smoother highlight roll off and I could increase that. You have full RGB curves, so you could go in here and control colors. We don't yet have HSL control within the masks, but if you get in and play with those curves, you can do a lot of the same things by controlling the red, green, and blue channel curves, not just the Luma curve. And the ability to do these really complex masking combinations that would literally take you probably an hour to build and refine manually. Here's a nice portrait that was taken in very low sunlight, but it's a little harsh. We're getting a little bit of blowout in the specular highlights on the face, things like that. I've already applied a preset. It looks good, but let's go to the AI sun and strobe combo and Lightroom's gonna grind a little on this because it's doing all this AI work and all these masks and boom, we've just applied all of these. And you might say, well, it's a little more intense than I want, no problem. Just go down here and turn it down a little bit. I'm actually gonna pull back the main exposure just a little bit to soften everything down because with the balance that I received from applying all of these masks to this from here to here, everything just kind of has this more subtle, gradual, softer. So the bottom line is that yes, masks in Lightroom absolutely need to get faster. You could, my video is like glitching, just trying to record this. It's driving me crazy. And even when I'm not recording, they are slow. And if I didn't have speed masking, I might not even use these masks because they would be so slow and cumbersome to use. Fortunately, by building these into speed mask develop presets, I can quickly apply, adjust. Whether you're doing harsh, difficult lighting situations or glamour portraits like I've shown in some of these, or maybe you just have simple street photography scenes and you just need simple mass combos to give them a little bit of life and extra dynamic. Either way, there's almost no case in which you should just be manually building masks up for each image. Build your masks with finesse, name them, control them, get your settings dialed in, and then use speed masks. Or if you, if you want to make your life easier and support the channel, go check out my elegant speed masks over at simefx.com. I'll put a link in the description. You guys let me know what you're thinking of how masks are in Lightroom this year. I think they've improved dramatically with some of these new features like the curves, like the separate selections this year where the AI mask detects the lips and the eyes and the whites of the eyes. All these things have allowed me to refine dramatically how precise the mask can be, particularly in portrait tools. And it just kind of puts Lightroom in a whole nother level up here, you can't even see that out of the camera because it's like not in reach. Okay, guys, hope you like this. Please subscribe. Let me know in the comments what you think and we will see you next time.